Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today we're going to be going over how to beat the Spider Dungeon from lower levels all the way up through Spider 20. So I'm going to be using quite a few champions today, so I won't be doing a deep dive into their gear, but I will give you a general overview of each of them. So we'll start with Arbiter here. So as you can see, she's rocking about 45k HP and uh, 259 speed, as well as 4000 defense. The main thing here is just going to be the speed for her. She won't be taking any hits from the spider and we'll only be using her in spider 20 towards the end where I'll be showing you how to farm in the end game. Next, I won't be using him today, but Rosin Scarhide is going to be an honorable mention. He is an amazing spider champion given his A2 provides a decreased defense and weaken. And his A3 here provides an AoE 100% turn meter decrease. So if you stack him up with resistance, he makes a great off affinity tank for uh, Spider 20. And he's just a great champion overall. Alright, next, we're coming down to Ultimate Gallic here. So he's one of the few champs in the game that provides an AoE HP burn. And he is amazing at higher level Spider teams. So as you can see here... On his A3, attacks all enemies two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns if they are under an, if this champion is under an increased attack buff. Each hit also has a 75% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 20% if the target is already under an HP burn debuff. So he can control a little bit of turn meter as well. I believe he has that on his A2 as well. Yeah, decreases target turn meter. So uh, he definitely provides a lot for the spider. And so I've got him running here at 100% crit rate because he needs that to drop the turn meter on his A2. About 208% uh, crit damage and about 201 speed, 235 accuracy to land the debuffs. Next we've got Miscreated Monster here. So this guy is the beast of spider. He provides the shields, the CC. He's just a monster, as his name implies. So I've got him rocking about 62k HP, 100% crit rate, 137 crit damage, and 257 accuracy in order to place his shields that his A2 provides. Which, uh, let's see here. Places a shield buff on all allies for three turns equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. So as long as he's hitting hard, uh, he's bringing in a lot of shields to keep your guys alive. Also a 50% chance to stun, great CC, and an ally protection. He provides a lot. Now Tayrell here, he's going to be coming in as a, a AoE decreased defense, as well as for his defense aura, his turn meter uh, decrease by 50%, which is also nice. And in Spider-19, he makes an amazing off-affinity tank, so we will be showing that as well. Stagnite here comes in to provide his slow on his A1, the decreased speed, as well as an AoE decreased defense and decreased attack. So he's rocking about 54k HP, about 2300 defense, uh, 202 speed, I've got him built for crit rate and crit damage, as you can see, as well as 210 accuracy to make sure he's landing those debuffs. Tayrell's gear, by the way, uh, not the greatest in the world. He could definitely use some improvement, but about 4k defense, uh, 206 speed, 289 accuracy. And uh, if you don't have a miscreated monster to pair with him, you definitely want to get him in some resistance gear in order to stop the poisons from taking him out if you're using him as an off affinity tank. So next we're going to be looking at Bellower here. So Bellower comes in in the earlier levels of Spider as a great AoE attack champion. So all the way up through Spider 14 you can expect to just bring in a bunch of AoE attack champions and burst the spider down before he gets a chance to do the same to you. So Bellower is a great addition to that team. He's built as my campaign farmer, so lots of attack, lots of crit damage, as you can see, 100% crit rate, and he's just in there to bring the hurt. Now, Kale here, uh, this isn't an optimal build for him for Spider. Uh, this is just kind of something I threw together for uh, Dragon Team a long time ago, but he's in a shield set, 
Uh, his attack isn't super high, but he still hits decently hard. Uh, he's rocking about 180 speed, 243 accuracy. And so the nice thing about him is he does bring some poison as well. So he'll be coming in an earlier level spider just to help burst down the spiderlings, poison the spider, and get us rolling on that. Next we have Apothecary, who's a mainstay in almost any spider team up until level 20. He's bringing the speed, uh, he's tanky, and he's bringing heals, so he's got a lot. You all know what Apothecary does, he's amazing. And uh, let's move on. So I've got two Armagers I'll be using here today. The first one is a very tanky one. Uh, he's got 100% crit rate to make sure that he's landing the turn meter decrease on his A1, which is 30% as long as it's critical. He also brings an enemy max HP attack. When the target is under 30% turn meter, he will use this and it does hit pretty hard. This guy is not built for crit damage, but my other Armager is. So he's coming in with 100% crit rate, 131% crit damage. So the difference between them is this one is built in order to tank attacks from, this, from the Spiderlings. So they'll be coming in, he's got low HP, they'll be hitting him while the other one can go in and uh, hit pretty hard, he's not going to be targeted at all because his HP is much higher. And finally, we'll be going over Lua. So Lua brings us a strong AOE attack. So she is very good up until about Spider 14, as well as a 100% turn meter decrease. So. She's an amazing champion for Spider, especially in lower levels. I'm sure she could come into some higher level teams too, just because she provides the turn meter decrease. But she will definitely be showing up in our lower level teams. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump into Spider 14 here. Get down. Alrighty, so as you can see here, I'm going to be running Tayrell as my leader. And then Apothecary is going to be coming in for speed. Then we're going to have Bellower. Where is he? There he is. So he's going to be bringing me some uh, AoE attacks. We're going to bring in Kale. And finally, we are going to bring in Lua. So these guys are going to be bursting down the Spiderlings. Uh, she and Tayrell will be dealing with some turn meter. Tayrell is going to bring me a decreased defense. He could be replaced by someone like War Maiden or Stag Knight, although Stag Knight wouldn't be the best on this affinity. So yeah, uh, any AoE or even single target decreased defense would be fine, but AoE would definitely be preferable. So this isn't going to be the quickest fight in the world, because we're not going to be stopping Skavog here from healing, but uh, you'll see how effective it is. So I'll probably let the first couple attacks go through. You see there already some of the spiderlings are dead. There goes the rest of them. So we're just going to be continuously knocking them down throughout the fight and uh, chipping away at the main spider's HP. So Tayrell comes in with a little bit of turn meter and Lua takes out the rest of it. So this does work a little bit better on manual just because you can control when the turn meter is going to be coming through. But to be honest, who wants to be playing on manual if you don't have to, right? So we'll go ahead. I will run this through the rest of the fight. Uh, I'll probably wait until she heals the first time, actually. But uh, then I will cut away and I will show you guys how it turns out. So as you can see, the Spiderlings really aren't getting much here. They're attacking my Lua when they get the chance, but Apothecary can definitely keep her healed up in order to keep her running and to keep the rest of my team running as well. All right, so we should be getting the first uh, Spiderlings being eaten right here. Oh, never mind. Tayrell coming through just in time with that turn meter decrease. So as you can see, we've got her down to already half health. Lua takes it down even further. So your team probably won't function quite this well if you're at a Spider 14 level, just because you're not going to be coming in with 200 speed like I am. But the strategy still works, you know, you just are going to be a little bit slower at it. She's going to get some more turns, but as long as you've got the idea right, you can come in up until this level and do it. 
If not, though, if you don't think your gear is strong enough, you can do the next strategy, which I'll be going over for Spider-19 to give you a little bit better chance. So there we go. We've got the first uh, spider eating, and she's back up to half health. So uh, I'll come back in at the end of the fight and show you how we did. Alrighty, so we're coming in right at the end of the fight here. As you can see, she's about to go down. We've got some poisons from Kale, so even if she did take another turn, that would finish her off. There we go, 3 minutes 22 seconds. As you can see, my team is fully healthy and alive. And we get a brew because we're under stage 16, but that's fine. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at Spider Stage 19. So... This is where a lot of people have trouble getting through the Arbiter missions. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to have Tayrell as our leader. So Tayrell is going to be an off affinity tank against the spider. And it seems strange to some people to bring in a magic affinity champion when we're going against force affinity. But the reason for it is that we want him to be taking the spiderling attacks. So as long as they're constantly attacking him, he has 4,000 uh, defense. His HP is a little low, but that's in order to make sure that the Spiderlings attack him. And we're going to have Miscreated Monster in as well. So he's going to be providing a shield for Tayrell, helping keep him healthy. If we didn't have that, however, we could potentially come in and make Tayrell a, uh, a little bit more resistance, like I mentioned before. Give him a resistance chest perhaps, definitely a resistance banner if you can get one. And uh, as long as you're over about 250, they shouldn't be placing poisons very often. So that really helps keep your tank alive. And then another thing that would help is if you brought in someone like a Stagnite or a Pedma or something like that who could bring an AoE decrease attack. That way they're just, he's not taking as much damage. So the next thing we're going to bring in is Apothecary. There he is. So he's going to be providing speed, as he always does. And we have to make sure that these two have higher HP than Tayrell, so that he's taking the attacks from the Spiderlings. Now potentially, uh, you could use Apothecary as your tank, but the problem with it is he's so much faster, for me at least, than these other two, his shields tend to fall off, so I can't use that reliably. And finally, we're going to be bringing in my two Armagers. They're going to be controlling the turn meter, helping make sure that Scavog isn't taking nearly as many turns as I am, so we can kind of whittle her down. So let's go ahead and get into this. And we will see how it works. So we've got the speed up. We're going to have the shields coming through right now. Got the decreased defense on all of these guys. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on Scavog. And that is one unfortunate thing that you're going to be dealing with here is just that Tayrell will get resisted, or not resisted, but rather he'll hit weak because of the affinity, and he is our only decreased defense champion. So that's not going to, uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to take her down just because we won't be able to get the full damage off as long as his decreased defense is resisted. But as long as, we're return as long as we are controlling the turn meter well enough, rather, uh, he should be able to come back through and get that decreased defense on. And as you can see, the... Uh, no, <laughs> didn't get it again. So this is going to be a little bit of a long fight if we're not getting that on. But we are decreasing the turn meter pretty well, so that's good. And as you can see, the spiderlings are all attacking him, just as I said. And that's exactly what we want. So Miscreated Monster should be coming through right now with the shields. Perfect. As long as that continues, we can keep him alive. So, as I said before, you see all these poisons stacking up. If you get his resist higher, you can stop that from happening. And uh, it will be a lot more beneficial to keeping him alive. But I use him in my clan boss, so I don't want to be putting him in resistance gear when I need the accuracy. Alright, so we finally got the decreased defense up. And it looks like Scavog is going to be taking her first turn pretty soon here, but that's okay. Apothecary should be about to heal up Tayrell. Keeping him healthy. Let's see. Nope, <laughs> I guess he doesn't have it up. But he will when he gets around to it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here and I'll come back at the end of the fight and we'll see how we did. 
Alrighty, so we're coming up towards the end here. 5 minutes and 14 seconds is when we're going to take her down. And so that's Spider-19 done with 3 Magic Champions, just 2 Epics, a Rare, and 2 Uncommons. And that's not going to be 100% necessarily, especially if your gear is not as good as mine. But uh, it's on auto, I didn't even have to manual it. If I did, it would have probably gone a lot easier. And uh, that's just kind of how you got to do it. So now finally we're going to be looking at Spider 20, and I'm going to do this one twice actually. So I'm going to be showing you what I would do, or rather what I did on my way up to Arbiter, as well as kind of what uh, I do now as far as farming it goes in the end game. Now, I don't have a Royal Guard or a Cold Heart, so that's not going to be as fast as what you have seen other people do, but it's pretty good for what I do have. So, uh, for what I did originally, actually, Stagnite didn't even exist originally, so what I did was I had Rosin's Scarhide coming in as an off affinity tank, and that was about 80 to 90% effective. But now that Stagnite is in the game, the best thing you can do is come in here, have Apothecary as your lead. And this is if you don't have any cold hearts. If you do, you can make this probably go a lot easier. But uh, you have Apothecary as your lead for the defense. Stagnite is your utility. He's bringing you AoE, decreased defense, and attack, as well as a slow speed. Then we've got Miscreated Monster coming in for the shields, obviously. If you don't have him, you could bring in Rosin, as I mentioned, as an off affinity tank or someone else like an Infernal Baroness or a Zephyr Sniper or someone who can do the job. Then we've got my two Armagers. So the reason one of them is built tanky is because he's going to be taking the hits in this setup. So all the Spiderlings will be going for him while the other one is free to deal out some damage. So let's see how this goes. But first we're going to come in with the speed up from Apothecary, then we'll get the shields. I wish my Stagnite were a little bit faster than my Miscreated Monster, that would make my initial shields better. But it's fine. <laughs> this goes just fine. This is a 100% win rate for me, it usually takes somewhere in the vicinity of 3 minutes. And you will see that with the Armagers, Dropping the turn meter, Apothecary speeding us up, and Stagnite slowing down the spider. Uh, she will never take a turn. And with these huge shields from Miscreated Monster, he has the affinity advantage, so he does tons of damage on this stage. He will just keep us completely healthy. They'll never break through it, and we will be good to go. So boom, there you go. See, turn meter's down. And then this Armager is going to come through, and boom, turn meter's down. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to the end here, and you'll see how it goes, but it's basically just going to be like this the entire time. Alrighty, so we're coming up towards the end here. As you can see, Scavog still has not taken a single turn. My Armager is still completely healthy. And uh, I mean, all of my team is completely healthy. They've had these huge shields the entire time from Miscreated Monster. And it is important to have him running around 200 speed for this, just to make sure that he's keeping those up the entire time. But, I mean, a little bit less is okay. You just want to make sure he is as fast as you can get him. So that's kind of how I have I was doing Spider for a long time. But, I recently leveled up Ultimate Gallic, and that changed things up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take Apothecary out, and put Arbiter in her place or in his place rather, in order to give me an increased attack. So you could use a, someone like a Gorgorab or even, I think there's a epic that can do it as well. It's like Elven Guard or something. No, it's not it. I, don't, I can't remember what her name is. But anyways, so Arbiter is going to come in and then we are going to find the Armager that is not tanky. So that's this one right here, he has the high critical damage. We are going to take him out, we're going to put in Ultimate Gallic. So it's basically the same idea in that we have a speed up, uh, we have a tanky Armager to take the hits and reduce turn meter, we've got the shields, we've got the decreased defense and attack and slow, 
but then Ultimate Gallic is going to come in here with the AoE HP burn, deal a lot of damage. He can do some turn meter as well, so let's see how this goes. Alright, so we're going to come in here, we're going to get the increased attack to start with. Here we get the shields, now the decreased defense, and boom, the HP burns. So we're decreasing the turn meter. And as you can see, she's just going to take a lot of damage. Unfortunately, his decreased turn meter got resisted a little bit there. So she's going to potentially be able to take a turn pretty soon. But he also drops the turn meter a little bit. So boom, we're burning through. Easy. We've got the increase attack back on. Which actually, he already had it from his own ability. But between the two of them, they can cycle it pretty consistently. Especially since Ar uh, Arbiter is running around 260 speed, so she's taking a lot of turns coming through. She decreased the turn meter there with Evil Eye. Evil Eye is a very important thing to bring in here. All of these champions have it in order to make sure that they can decrease the turn meter as much as possible. And we should be able to rotate around an HP burn here pretty soon. Oh no, she didn't... <laughs> Okay, so I think he boosted his turn meter a little bit and it was able to get ahead of her in order to uh, use that ability. Normally she can get that up just in time, so this is going to take a little bit longer. But it should still be fine, we're not in any danger of losing here. And as you can see, she still hasn't taken a turn. So even without the double Armagers, as long as you've got Ultimate Gallic in there, he can really help you keep that turn meter down but she will eventually be able to take one. We're not going to be able to keep it down 100% like we did on that last run. So my ultimate Galax running about 201 speed. I guess I should probably slow him down a little bit just to make sure that she's coming through and putting in that increased attack before him. But it's typically fine. It's just he plays with his turn meter so much that it can kind of mess things up. So there we go, we've got the HP burns back on a few of them, and she's probably going to go down right here. Boom, boom, and one more hit should do it. There we go. So 228, normally that's more like a minute 30, but a uh, pretty good run, so... That's how I'm doing it now, and uh, you see the best time, 147 actually, but I've only run it once before this, so I need to go through and uh, tune Ultimate Gallic a little better. As you can see, 5.7 million damage. He's doing a lot. If you could bring in someone like an Ignatius or a Trunda, they could do it even better than him without needing Arbiter. You could have Apothecary in there. So HP Burn is definitely one of the best, most consistent strats you can come in with. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I definitely enjoyed making it, and I've really been enjoying my start on YouTube. I appreciate all the comments down below of you guys giving me feedback, constructive criticism, as well as support, and I would really appreciate it if you guys came through and just told me what kind of content you want to see in the future. Whether it be champion guides, dungeon guides, uh, clan boss, anything like that, more arena, I don't have a ton of champions at level 60, but I will do what I can to kind of help you guys get the content that you're looking for, because I want this to be a community where everyone is engaging and just kind of letting me know what they want. So yeah, please comment down below, subscribe for future content, and thanks.